Many actors are surprised when I tell them that they are the CEO of their company. It's as if they've spent most of their creative life working on their talent with little time spent on their business plan. A business plan is something every professional should have to keep their vision clear. Now, I don't mean literal vision. <laughs> I mean seeing their career journey as a process and growth opportunity. So let's take a moment and look at the responsible CEO. Let's look at the 10 actor investment strategies that can infect and affect your investment for the better on this episode of Casting Actors Cast. Well, hello, <laughs> and welcome to today's episode of Casting Actors Cast. How are you? I'm Jeffrey Dreisbach, Casting Director with McCorkle Casting in New York. So good that you are here. It's nice to see you. Thanks for tuning in. I'm really excited to share this particular episode with you. I think there's a lot of useful information, and I really appreciate all of the notes and kind words I've been getting from people from all over the world, quite frankly. And you have that opportunity as well by going to castingactorscast.com, all one word, castingactorscast, and then you can fill out that form that says dive into the talent pool. You can also leave me a message, a note, a question, anything you want. And if you do that, that'll open up an additional sheet on the website where you can download a free book called Conversation Pieces Out of the Studio, The Voice of a Workshop for Professional Actors. It's a 100-page PDF that you can download and read all about doing voiceover work. The other freebie that I have there is a video called Casting Director Secrets, What They Don't Want You to Know. Um, but guess what? I'm going to tell you in this free 20-minute video. Additionally, there's an area of show notes that I'm calling Jeff's Jots. And so you can go to Jeff's Jots. You can download that one page. It's you, usually it is the bullet points um, and the intros and outros that I actually use on the podcast. But you know what? I think actors are finding it like a really good cheat sheet. It's a help. It's a help for them to retain the information that I'm providing on the podcast. So that's absolutely free. Also, I'm still looking for those of you who are interested in getting your self-tape evaluated live on an episode of Casting Actors Cast. You can do so by going to the website, castingactorscast, all one word, at gmail.com. So submit your videos and you might be chosen to be seen live on the air where I actually critique your video live. Um, that's been an awful lot of fun, and I've got some videos coming up as well, but certainly feel free to submit yours if you like. You know, I love doing these podcasts, and I have to take a moment to do the shout out that I have with all of the folks who are kind enough to sponsor um, promoting my podcast and website on their website. So here's my quick little promotion to those friends who are choosing to self to self promote. No who are choosing to promote the podcast, Casting Actors Cast. <laughs> this episode of Casting Actors Cast would not be possible without the following cross-promotional shout-outs. Actors Connection. Please do yourself a favor and check out Actors Connection. They provide classes, seminars, workshops with working industry professionals to help you advance your acting career. Go to ActorsConnection.com slash New York for their current calendar of amazing classes, workshops, and events. WeAudition.com WeAudition.com is the video chat community to audition, self-tape, rehearse, and get expert industry advice. Find a rehearsal or self-tape partner instantly. Earn money for rehearsing with other actors. And as a special incentive to Casting Actors Cast listeners, you will receive 25% off membership using the code CAC25. That's CAC25 for a membership discount. Weaudition.com. 
Acting and Voice Studios. I am excited to share that Acting and Voice Studios will provide top quality acting training for film and television to actors all around the world. Check out my bi-monthly blog posts on their website while learning more about classes for adults and young people, including voiceover and acting demo production. Go to actingandvoicestudios.com. Are you interested in honing your voiceover skills? My good friend and voice talent, Philip Galinsky, is running yourvostudio.com. Coaching the creative process for voiceover artists is their passion. So go to yourvostudio, all one word, dot com for more information. Thanks, Philip. Now, other places in addition to the ones I've just mentioned uh, that I am teaching at include the Growing Studio and T. Schreiber Studio. So I ask you to go ahead and please visit their websites as well. And check out the schedule at castingactorscast.com slash classes workshops. And I hope that we can work together soon. Thank you. So thank you for that. Thank you for doing that. Also, the last request that I have before we get into the subject matter, and that is, it would be really cool if you could leave a like, um, a positive review, a thumbs up, anything that you could do to help get the word out about the podcast, especially on iTunes. If you wouldn't mind leaving an iTunes review, it would mean so very much to the podcast and to the growing community of actors that are finding this podcast not only useful and valuable, but are really encouraged by the fact that we're growing this community. As long as I'm getting feedback from you that is positive in nature, that you really like what's going on here, then I couldn't be more delighted than to um, continue to do these particular podcasts. So that's my begging moment. <laughs> that's what I'm begging you. If you've gotten something out of these podcasts, it would really be great if you could return the favor by you know, promoting and letting others know about it and giving me a like, a share, a review, you know, blah, 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 blah. You know what I'm talking about. Thank you so much for that. So listen, I think it's time that actors look at their career and see where, as the CEO of their own company, you are investing in your own company. So that's the, I think, the different kind of headspace. As I mentioned in the introduction, you spend all of this time in your creative endeavor of improving your acting skills, being more comfortable in front of the camera, or perhaps your musical theater skills. Um, you're now getting back into classes and you're taking voice classes and you're dancing. And maybe you're going to school in the fall. Maybe you're starting a BFA or an MFA degree, whatever it is. That's a lot of energy and a lot of focus. And I really appreciate that for you. I think that's great. However, here's the big however, a lot of times those business type plans, as the CEO, you need to have a business plan. And I think that that gets put on the back burner many, many times. And so I just want to give you a checklist of some things to think about, to put on your checklist, to find out if you are ready if you're going to be ready for those opportunities when they present themselves. So here's the checklist that you'll find very, very useful as the CEO of your own company that I'm calling acting as an investment. Of course, number one, without question, picture, resume, postcards, are they ready? When was the last time you got your pictures done? It might be time to really think as the fall is going to be coming up sooner than you think and theater is going to be getting back and film production is going to be gearing up to be even more aggressive than it is right now. By all means, this is something that you should really take a good hard look at. The rule is, in my mind, the younger that you are, the more often you're going to need a new picture. So I've done several podcasts on your picture and resume. I encourage you to go back and listen to some of those uh, podcasts because I think you'll find them really helpful. In addition, I mentioned postcards because I still think, you, uh, you know, call me old fashioned, I don't care, but sometimes getting an occasional postcard and the postcard is just the reduced headshot. And, but on the back, you can write a little note 
You can talk about what you're working on. You can talk about a class you're starting. You can talk about whatever good news you want to share with those in the industry. And just as a regular course of good marketing habits to get into, sending out a postcard is a really cool idea. So the question is, your picture and your resume, are they new, ready, and are they interesting? Number two on the checklist, your wardrobe. The actor's wardrobe, and I'm going to include shoes. So I think, quite frankly, having a separate audition wardrobe is really smart. Here's what I mean by that. Having six or seven items that you only wear for auditions. That's a separate part of your closet. You tell yourself, I'm not going to wear my audition wardrobe on the street uh, or on a regular basis. So a separate wardrobe that you know you look really good in, you know fits really well. Um, and it's, a, you know, six or seven pieces, meaning if you're female and you like to wear a skirt and a nice crisp blouse um, and, you know, nice conservative jewelry, whatever, that's great. Then you have your slacks or then you have your business attire, whatever it is. But having those little pieces, those garments in your closet ready for when you get an audition, that's going to save you a lot of undue pressure that we all put ourselves under. What am I going to wear? And so, depending upon your area of interest, knowing that you have this actor's wardrobe that is ready, that's really great. And I'm also going to include shoes on that. So, I think shoes, um, you know, again, call me old fashioned, but having the right footwear for that particular audition is only going to help you feel better about yourself. It's not about me saying, oh, those are great shoes. It's about you saying, I feel great in these shoes, and that's why I'm wearing them. You see the difference? So the actor's wardrobe is more for you to feel comfortable, confident, and appropriate to what you are auditioning for. Never dress in costume, ever, ever, ever. But you can certainly suggest the character through some choice pieces of material. You wouldn't go and audition for, um, you know, a, a skid row bum in a suit and a tie. You would, however, wear that suit and a tie in a Law and Order SVU production, wouldn't you? Just the logic of that, uh, I think, is kind of obvious. It makes good sense. But shoes are in the same category, I think. Just some nice uh, shoes that are appropriate to the rest of what you're wearing make a lot of sense. Plus, like I said earlier, you're going to feel good about yourself in them, and that's really, really important. So the next item on your list is your cell phone. Now, I know that's kind of obvious, right? But your cell phone is really an important tool for being the CEO of your own company. You can receive and send email text. You can talk to people. You can write letters. You can take pictures. There's all kinds of really cool things that you can do with your cell phone. So making sure you have a decent cell phone, if it's a newer cell phone, all the better. But knowing all of those great little things that your cell phone can do, sometimes people just don't spend enough time knowing that some of these apps that are out there can be extraordinarily helpful to you in your acting business. So having your cell phone, make sure it's charged up, make sure you have all the right cordage for it. Um, here's a quick example. Um, in a recent class I taught on going from stage to screen, many actors were very surprised that you can take a cord, a cable, relatively inexpensive, plug it into your cell phone, plug that cord then into your laptop or your computer, and it makes an amazing webcam. The quality of the video is so much better than it would be if you were just using the camera in your laptop. So those kind of little tricks of the technology that you already possess, you might surprise yourself. Now, along the same lines of that, number four, self-tape recording equipment. Again, that's your cell phone, but I'm also going to throw in then a microphone. A lavalier microphone is extremely helpful, especially for film and television auditioning because it replicates the quality of sound you will be providing when you book the job. So why not make sure you have the best recording possible? 
Now for uh, theater and musical theater, you know, I think a microphone is equally important, but I know that some of you are strapped financially and that you're not necessarily that technical, but do test out the quality of the sound for your theater auditions and mostly has to do with the room that you are in. If you're in, I'm just making this up now, but if you're in a basement, for example, and there's a lot of echoey sound, you know, that's not going to be helpful to us who are evaluating your work. So just consider what are the options available to you. Most of the time, recording in a very quiet room makes perfect sense. And so self-tape recording equipment, number four is on that list. Make sure you are ready to go. Um, by the way, I have several podcasts about Zoom recording, about self-taping. I teach it. So there are all kinds of resources that are out there available to you. Jump on that, would you? Because I think it's going to make a difference. Theater is coming back. But film and television auditions through Zoom, I think, are going to be around for a little while yet to come. Okay, number five on my list, classes and seminars. If you're going to be making an investment in your acting career, putting aside some funds for act classes and seminars, and I'm talking about classes with agents and casting directors and managers, people who are in the trenches every day doing the work, but also happen to be good teachers. Now, not everybody who's a casting director is an excellent teacher, so you have to be a little bit careful about that. And a lot of people would argue about seminars, that they're just a waste of money. It's considered pay to play. You know, you put your money down just to have a chance to audition for somebody. I'm thinking that's a little cynical myself. That's just my opinion. I think that if you target who you're taking classes and seminars from, specific reasons that you're taking those classes, for example, a class in going from stage to screen, if you've had a lot of theater experience or training and you really want to find out about film and television opportunities, well, that makes sense to take that class. I mean, if you love dancing, but your tap isn't that great, then guess what? Taking a tap class makes sense too, right? So classes and seminars are part of the business plan because they can make a difference. I promise you. Let me just say this as well. Even if you take a class from a casting director and they don't bring you in to audition for a project they're working on, that doesn't mean that you're bad. <laughs> that means that maybe you're not right. That's different. But guess what? Even if you might not be right now, you could be right later. And if you're not right later, at the very least, you've taken a three or four session course where you've learned something, where you've walked away with an additional piece of confidence, an additional bit of information that will make you more successful. So that's why I encourage classes, and I think they have to be definitely part of the checklist of things to have for your acting career. Now, number six, what I call resource materials. It's really valuable, I think, to put a some uh, financial uh, money, some some put some resources aside for your resource materials. Make sure you set aside some funds for books, for your Dropbox account. Maybe you need additional storage space on the Google Drive, for example. Obviously, Actors Access and Backstage.com or any other tangible assets that are instrumental for growing your career, you need to at least have a column of those expenses taken care of. Um, and I know we could certainly talk about jobs and how difficult it is, but once you have a business plan in mind, just don't forget about those incidentals that might be necessary to growing your career. Now, number seven, marketing. What I'm calling the website, your blog, whatever social media you have. You might need to be printing out flyers or postcards or even stationary that you have a logo with your name on it. That's kind of cool um, that you might want to use for any kind of correspondence. And I know snail mail is snail mail, but you know what? I know a lot of actors who really kind of think in terms of having that corporate 
personality by having a logo and having their media really clearly laid out. And certainly every email has their headshot, their resume, their website put into the masthead of their email. It all makes perfect sense. So your marketing plan is can, you know, honestly, it can be a simple one, but those are the elements that you need. Your website, whatever blogging you do, by the way, if you're going to be a blogger, if you're going to be talking about a day in the life of an actor, please do yourself a favor and stay with it. Don't just write a few blogs and let three or four months go by. If you're going to make a commitment to doing a blog, then stick with it, would you please? And then number eight, this is kind of a side expense but an important investment to your acting career is those expenses you might find as it relates to musical theater. Obviously, there's additional expense with uh, making um, and having uh, an accompanist or doing the research, making sure that your book is up to date. That can kind of be a little expensive sometimes. Certainly making sure you are able to pay your voice coach, your voice teacher, all of those additional expenses that you might not have thought of. When I was talking about the actor's wardrobe, I didn't mention dance shoes, but that's another business related expense that you need to have on your checklist of important things. So musical theater expenses, I've given their own sort of checklist category because many of you also like to do musical theater work. It might not be everything that you want to do, but there is that category in case that kind of talks to you <laughs> or speaks to you. Now, moving on, um, this is going to sound a little weird, I think, but transportation expenses. You know, if you're living in Los Angeles and you have to go from one audition to another audition, from an audition to a class or from home to a class to an audition, whatever it might be, just make sure that you have coverage for the transportation, whether you own a car, whether you're taking public transportation, whether you have to pay for a gas, which is now, you know, getting up there again. So please make sure that transportation expenses are part of your CEO business plan. Now, moving on from that, number 10, what I call personal development. Now, have you heard the, um, have you heard the concept about personal development? I want to share this with you. And that is literally things that you can do for yourself that are inherently helpful to your career. A uh, quick example. Are you working out? Are you going to the gym? Great. Are you watching what you eat? Are you in the best physical shape that you can be in? That's awesome. That's personal development. I encourage actors to see a therapist. Now I know I'm talking about these are, I'm just throwing these out. You're going, oh my God, this is so expensive. I'm not trying to make you spend money. I am trying to get you to think in terms of how to be the CEO of your own company. But I think all actors should have some interest, whether it be just reading books on psychology. I think a, 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 some therapy sessions are really, really helpful. I mean, after all, they're about the human condition and getting some insight about your own way of doing things, your own way of thinking can be really helpful and can be reassuring. And, and be a positive thing for your own personal development and therefore even helpful for your acting. Along the lines of personal development, I always encourage actors to have some kind of a hobby or interest outside of the profession. Now, whether that's your volunteering for something, perhaps you're involved in some of the, the social, um, uh, social issues that are taking place out there. Maybe you are an activist of some sort and putting yourself out there in a political way. Fantastic. Anything that you do outside of your acting career can go towards your personal development. It really is true. You can draw upon those life experiences. And if you feel really good about those choices, your life experiences are even going to be more um, enhanced. And so is your acting. I hope that makes sense. I sounded like a little bizarre right there, but I think you know what I'm talking about. So excellent. Uh, have you heard the acronym ROI? ROI, it stands for return on investment. It means that when you make an investment, it should pay a dividend, or um, at the very least, it should improve the quality of your brand. 
So as an actor, you can expect that your ROI to include the following. Representation, finding an agent or manager that will help you with your acting opportunities. Audition increase, the number of auditions and the number of callbacks and the number of bookings that grow. That's a good ROI. Industry contacts and growth feeling like you are part of the community is extremely valuable for an acting career. Overall, industry participation. Expanding your circle to include new opportunities should happen. Investing in your acting is a plan. It's a strategy. It's a way for you to find structure in your creative life. It also assumes that you are pleased with the quality of your acting work. If not, then I think you should consider classes and workshops. Put that up on your list as you evaluate your progress. Thank you for listening and watching. I'm Jeffrey Dreisbach, and this is Casting Actors Cast. See you next time. Casting Actors Cast is made possible with your support just by listening. Please like, share, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts.